All right, guys, we are in the lanes for Q1 here in St. Louis. Everything's ready to go. Hopefully we can go. They're on cap, making a burnout. All right, so hopefully we can go A to B and get into the field firmly. We got 21 cars here today, so we need to qualify well right off the get so we can work on tomorrow. All right, guys, I've had uh, more than one person. I'm sorry, I'm not saying your names out. I can't remember, but I've had a few people ask about the ring and pinion on these things. So um, there is a ring and pinion, and this ring gear is a 12-inch ring gear, and there's a pinion, and it's, I mean, you can tell with the relationship to my hand, they're huge. Um, we're limited on gear ratio. We can only run um, as high as a 320. Um, I'm sure if we could run a 290, we would. But we're regulated by rule that we can't run um, higher than than 320. And then, um, like I say, it's a 12-inch ring gear, huge pinion, and they get inspected for cracks um, every four or five passes, maybe six passes. And then their cycle life is targeted around 50 passes. I mean, it's always getting inspected, but we'd like to see them live for about 50 passes. But then um, they'll have cracks in the ring gear to the point where we can't run them anymore. So hoping, hoping that answers everybody's question. Thanks. All right, Davey T asked uh, what weight oil we use and does lighter weight oil make horsepower? Um, so we use 70 weight. It's real thick, heavy oil, and that's to take the punishment of what we do. We have pretty big clearances on all the main and rod bearings, and that thick old oil helps cushion the blow. But you're correct, as in lighter weight oil does free up horsepower, it's less friction. So in my other job where we dick on comp eliminator motors and stuff like that, we use real light oil. Pro stocks out here run 08 weight oil, and comp eliminators will run real similar, a 08 or a 07 weight oil, as light as possible and still protect the motor to free up all the ho available horsepower. All right, looks like the clutch department is ready to go for the rest of the weekend. But Fibsters asked, uh, what you know, on a good run, what's used and what's tossed? And most of the time on a good run, uh, we'll still toss all of the upper rod bearings and all the lower main bearings. We only let them run one, one lap. Uh, we'll still push all the rack out and it'll all get inspected and tore down by Blaine. And he will check all the tolerances and see how much the rods crush or how much it dish the piston. Um, rings, sometimes we'll get a second pass out of a set of rings, but a lot of times they only go down the track once. Um, the heads will still come off and get and inspected and see what they need and they'll get serviced. All the valves will come out, all the springs will get checked. Everything will get checked in maintenance, but a lot of that stuff will live to see another pass. Um, you consumed up about seven gallons of oil between the warm up and the run, all the fuel that we consumed, all 16 spark plugs will get replaced. We never go down the track with those twice. Um, that's pretty much it. The clutch back will all get serviced. Uh, the clutches can run two runs, a new disc, and then it'll get cut once and ran again, and that's usually its life expectancy, and all the floaters in between the discs only make one pass, no matter how good or bad the pass is, they're gone. So a lot of consumables, even when it's uh, a good pass, but that's it in a nutshell. Hey guys, I got quite a few questions on, like, when we pull a main stud, why can't we repair it in the, in the car? Okay. This stuff on the general at the bottom end anyways there's like three or four guys that have asked questions so um, one when we pull a main stud it's a little bit more involved um, you gotta drill that out and then 
drill it out and tap it for the next size stud. Then they make a special size stud for it. So one, you gotta have the studs with you. Two, um, it's gotta be really accurate. It needs to be put in a machine and drill perfectly. Um, so if it's a little bit off, it's gonna cause problems with the main cap, cause problems with the bearing. So we can't do it in the car. Um, we just gotta do it outside the car. And we could maybe make a jig and do it in the pit, but for right now, we send it to it, where they put it in a mill and do it in a mill. Um, the other thing is, uh, on pulling the main stud is, we pull less with the four bolt, there's more support there, and the torque spec's a little bit different. Um, and it seems to hold, you know, you got all that more clamping force spread out over a big, greater distance with their, um, you pull less main studs with the four bolt block. Um, there's also, somebody asked about the girdle system. There was a girdle that was out that kind of connected the three main caps together, the three middle ones, two, three, and four. Uh, but it's a lot of, it's like 20, bolts and fasteners and uh, a lot of extra time to take it on and off and I don't think it really did that much I mean it's still moving around so I don't think that's really taken off too well the four bolt is really good the only problem with the four bolt is is when you blow them up they're harder to repair because there's less main webbing in the engine because the main cap's wider so they remove some of that material but either way um, it is what it is, so to speak. We're going to cause damage. A bunch of horsepower and how much pressure we can create. But, you know, everything has a service life. Um, and generally, when they start pulling main studs, it means the blocks, you know, kind of maybe end of the year of its service life that you start to have. It's just been used. So, anyways, hope that answers your guys' questions. Thanks again. Like and subscribe. Keep asking questions. I'll keep answering as many as I can. Thanks. Hey, everybody. We are up here in the staging lanes for Q2. Last night, uh, we shook the car pretty good, broke some engine mounts, rattled Clay's cage for, I think, a three Tylenol hit. Um, so we really, we're gonna be first pair out here for Q2, and we really need to just get it A to B, do a nice clean run. So that's what we're shooting for, and hopefully we'll video that run and, and be in the field. guys it is race morning here in st louis uh yesterday uh q2 went pretty well for us we ran a 78 but when we got back uh i found a crank crack in the crankshaft and then we had to make some other adjustments so we didn't make uh q3 but we're we're okay we're gonna race leah pruitt in the first round and uh see if we can't go some rounds today but i got a little bit of time this morning so i thought i'd answer a few questions and one of those questions is uh oh shit sorry uh Uh, David Woolard asked, how many passes do we get on a crank if we don't hurt it like any other way? If it just times out. Um, times out in between 10 and 12 passes usually somewhere in there. If, um, we don't time it out other than that's when we'll start seeing cracks where we don't trust it anymore. Um, and yesterday that was right at 11 passes. We put that 11th pass on it in Q2. Uh, and Roger Brandt asked about tire covers. Asked like black, white, wide. Um, we use white ones for the most part to reflect as much sunlight as possible. So the reason we put uh, tire covers on that is we don't want the sun to beat down and heat up the slick and change the pressure quicker than we can re regulate it. If you'll notice, if you ever come to a race, you'll see us adjust the tire pressure in the lanes all the way up and continuing to adjust tire pressure right until right before we go. We want, we deal with tenths of a pound, um, two tenths of a pound matter. And so we're constantly keeping up with it and it takes very little temperature change with the sun to change that that reading. And then Gary McKenzie asked, what do we use to wipe down the chassis to keep it from rusting? What we use is plain old mystery marble oil. The chassis gets wiped down. 
probably every four to five passes. Every time we crack check it, we clean it and wipe it down with mystery marble oil to keep it from rusting. And that's how we work around it. Uh, appreciate all of you. Uh, like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. I'll keep answering questions. And try to get some videos some cool stuff. So appreciate y'all. Thank you. Jason Pittman asks, what do we use to clean parts on the car when we're at the track? Well, I'm back here in the solvent area. We call it solvent area. We have a solvent wash tank right there that all gets recycled and all that. We have our dirty wash thing and then uh, safety clean takes that for us and that's where we dump our oil and safety clean also takes that for us. We also use quite a bit of brake clean and the brake clean gets washed down into the solvent deal that goes back to safety clean. So brake clean and solvent for the most part is what we use and a little bit of mystery marble oil depending on what you're cleaning. All right, on the last video, somebody asked me uh, who does our block repair, and I thought I'd come down and say hi to him, and he's right here. Mr. Tim Wilkerson does all of our block repair right there in Springfield. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, thanks for uh, being a follower. That's uh, that's a really neat deal. Um, these guys are they're a great they're a great track racing team, and uh, we're proud to work on their stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I call it all junk, so. But uh, it, to, to me, it's going to be junk before long if I have anything to do with it. But <laughs> we're, we're proud to work on it there. We have a little place called Capital City Machine Shop in Springfield, Illinois. And uh, these guys bring us all their stuff, and we're, we're proud to have them as customers. And it's what keeps my funny car going, too. My, that, about that machine shop where my funny car wouldn't operate. So but, uh, we're having a great time racing, and uh, we're, we're proud to be involved with the uh, Camping World and NHRA drag racing. And proud to be involved with Stringer's team. Yep, we appreciate it. They help us out a lot. We get yeah. pressed to get a block repaired quickly, and Tim always finds a way to get it done for us. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that, buddy. You're a good yeah. man. <laughs> thank you. Hey, everybody. Um... I am filming tonight from the top of my uh, shop because I am uh, putting in uh, foam closure strips because the contractor uh, didn't put them under the ridge vent and allows debris and stuff to blow into the shop until I get the roof insulated. So anyways, taking care of that, but I figured I'd do a wrap up of uh, St. Louis tonight. Um, I kind of forgot or not forgot, just been really busy since we got home. Um, today is my first day off, and I think 40 days, something like that. Anyways. Uh, Obviously, we didn't do very well in St. Louis. Went out first round, didn't run very well, didn't qualify very well. Um, you know, I don't know. I think we've, since the countdown started, we lost our way a little bit. Hopefully, we can find it um, for the last four races of the season. Looking forward to getting to Dallas next weekend and uh, seeing if we can shake the cobwebs off and uh, uh, do a lot better. Anyways, uh, I appreciate everybody for liking and subscribing and and watching these videos um, I have a good time doing them I think we answered quite a few questions in this one because we missed the qualifying pass I had a little bit of extra time um, anyways uh, thanks again and uh, give you a little panorama from the top of my roof and uh, call it a day sun's going down really comfortable outside right now it's like 67 degrees 65 that's the top of my house. Shop's a little bigger than the house. Sorry. Anywho, hope everybody has a good night. Talk to y'all soon.